Hi, I'm Camila and today I want to tell you about digital watercolor and how to make your digital world look like one with using my watercolor brushes for Procreate. I love digital and traditional media, my all-time favorite is definitely watercolor and I always search for ways and tricks to make digital artworks look watercolorish. I tried many brushes, software and apps. When I found Rebel a few years ago, I thought I finally have the winner, but everything changed when I bought an iPad and became iPadaholic. The possibility of working from every place is priceless. I can paint from a garden or a couch. It releases me from sitting by my desk for long hours. And this caused that desktop software which doesn't have a mobile app isn't so attractive anymore. And sadly, Rebel isn't available on iPad. Earlier I enjoyed a lot of watercolor brushes by KIT Webster for Photoshop and even Photoshop has an iPad app and there is a specific painting app called Adobe Press. But I have an impression that they appeared too late and are left way behind apps like Infinite Painter, Clip Studio Paint or Procreate. Procreate is an app I use the most frequently. I value its stability, smart usage of gestures, clean layout and a lot of addition tools and features. When Procreate 4 allowed us to import Photoshop brushes, I imported Kai's watercolor set right away, but I was disappointed. They didn't look so good as in Photoshop or Fresco. I went deep into the settings of the brush studio and forced them to work as they should. And thanks to that I got to know all settings and adjustments good enough to create my brushes from scratch. My goal was to create a collection that will look like watercolors, but not only that. I wanted to have all tools I will need to create a traditional artwork in one Procreate set. In my collection you can find pencils, pastels, gouache and various brushes of watercolor effects. I made images with all strokes and samples showing how particular brushes paint and what uh, their destiny is. But let's make one thing clear. Even the best tools won't help you if you don't know how to use them or what effects do you want to achieve. And this is what we will talk about today. What makes a watercolor painting looks like one and how to recreate it. It is much easier to use this collection when you already know how to paint with watercolors. But if you don't, don't worry, I will tell you what effects are typical for traditional water paints and how to recreate them in Procreate with my brushes. I believe lots of these tips and tricks you can use in other programs and by using other brushes as well. Basic info, watercolors are transparent water paints. They behave differently according to how much water you mix with the pigment and the amount of water present on a paper. Water makes them spread and mix on a wet surface. When a sheet is dry, you can paint with transparent layers of color. The main rule is, every new stroke on a dry paper will be darker. It means a light color on a darker one won't be bright, won't be opaque. This principle is easy to break in the digital process, but it is worth knowing that. In the traditional process, you have to choose a paper at the beginning. It absorbency, texture, grammage and thickness influences a paint's behavior. In our case, the only thing we care about is texture. But it has a crucial role. I import a paper texture to procreate and keep it on the highest layer in the multiply blend mode. Thanks to that, it is visible above all layers. It suggests that we use traditional paper for our artwork. My brushes have various textures in them. The same paper texture above all layers makes a whole piece more cohesive. There are four papers in my set. They are JPEGs in A3 size. It's quite big. So you have something to start. Transparency causes that pencil sketches which we make before applying colors are more or less visible. That is why we make careful drafts with thin lines. Watercolors don't forget mistakes easily. And I know something about it. In Procreate you can always undo and redo. You can correct any mistake. If the sketch is too explicit, you can always decrease its opacity in the layer settings. But you cannot make a thick line thinner after drawing it. That is why I usually start with brushes like sharp or soft pencils, which can give you thin lines. For a rough sketch I use the rock pencil or soft pastel. My favorite of all is the pastel love pencil. It can make thin or thick lines and gets grainy with filled. I put my sketch in the multiply mode under the layer with paper to find it easily. 
The wet and wet technique is something we associate with the watercolors for sure. Usually we use it on the first stage of a playing course. Wet paint on a wet paper creates seamless color gradients. Most of my brushes work in the multiply mode to be transparent and it is harder to achieve a smooth color transition between hues by using them. I made subtle opaque brushes like smooth colors, grainy soft smudge colors uh, for this job. Another way is to use brushes as the smudge tool. The minus is that they mix colors but also ruin the textures of already painted strokes. But it isn't a big deal if you have a layer with the paper texture turned on. You can see how they work on this image. The third way is to choose brushes which use a primary and a secondary color at one stroke. You can set these colors on the color panel. Depending on the pressure or tilt, they will use one or another hue. All brushes with two colors in the name work this way. So two colors fill, a grunge edge, two colors. Watercolors work like layers in multiply mode. That is why I use this mode on most of the brushes. You can use them in the same layer and every stroke will be darker and won't cover a painting underneath, like an opaque paint would, just like with real ones. If you don't feel confident enough yet, I recommend using layers in multiply blend mode to add every crucial part of your work. It allows to making correction easier. You will find opaque brushes in this set as well, for example acrylic marker, fine gouache with salt, gouache basic and more. I sang them with an N letter at the end of their names to find them easily. Well, except for pencil brushes, I thought it is obvious, but maybe I should also do it. I think I have already stressed enough about the essential role of textures in the digital watercolor technique. Hence, almost every brush has its own. I use scans of papers, watercolor splashes and washes to create them. You can add more variety with the watercolor splashes textures I added to my set, four kinds of them in A3 size. You can adjust it in adjustments, parallel curves with the gamma curve to change the contrast. You can also control its intensity by decreasing or increasing the opacity of the layer. I often play with other course adjustments. It is uh, enjoyable to play with it. Try it. If you still need more stains and splashes, use brushes from background and effects section like multiple splashes, splash, flower bleed, widespread, messy grind texture. There is a ton of these tools there. And we will go back to them later. Another thing we want to recreate are darker edges of watercolor stains. Most of my brushes will have this effect, that is why not all of them can make smooth color transitions. You can spot various versions of it in diluted with fringe, wet on wet, grunge edges, fringe and wet edges. If you want to emphasize this effect, you can use shading edges, darken edge, a grainy and darker edge. They all work in the multiply mode and create a shady border on the top of a stroke. All of them are directional brushes, it means that the dark part will appear on the top when you paint from left to right or from top to bottom. Watercolors are generally light, delicate, with big parts of diluted areas paired with regions looking in a more detailed way. It is the technique perfect for the lost and found game. A lot of effects are possible to create only when the paint is wet, so you have to work fast. You can't enlarge your watercolor paper or tap with two fingers to undo. It isn't so easy to overwork watercolor. In comparison to digital art, it is better to remember about it when you want to paint a digital watercolor. Leave some parts a bit unfinished, focus on the main area of your work to show what is the most important. We instinctively look at more defined things first. By preserving a bit of unspecified space, we leave a place for vivious minds. We all love artworks that let our imagination works. Having complete control over your work in Procreate is easy and so tempting, but also boring. I created also brushes which are harder to control, like spread texture, fringe and splash, blots, wet and wet, messy, grainy texture and more. Play with them and let yourself to improvise a bit. Use more precise ones like pencils, inks, acrylic or alcohol marker or watercolor basic to paint details. When you paint with water only on a watercolor piece, the water displays the pigment at the edges of the stain and leaves a lighter center. I use drop of water and diluted texture to simulate this behavior. I am especially content with how the second one works. 
Another effect I love is the round bleeds of a pigment on a wet surface. For this text I use widespread, flower bleed, splash and splash with salt texture. Start in the center and paint around with less pressure to have a more subtle borders. I use them mostly to add variations for background or bigger areas of color. Water in watercolor is the most exciting and unpredictable factor. It is so much harder to control than brushes in graphic software. It is the reason for many frustration when you begin your adventure with watercolor painting, but also a brilliant ally. All these puddles, bleeds, streaks. Water creates patterns and texture I would never think of, and even if I did, it is very hard to intentionally recreate these happy accidents in a traditional way and not mess up our work. It is so much easier in Procreate, so don't be afraid and add messy stains and spatters, you can always undo it. All brushes with spatters, little stains and spots serve to add a more natural messy look. You can choose between dirty flicks, spatter control, spatter small, thick grainy, dilated texture or drop of water. Every watercolorist knows what soil can do with the wet paint. It absorbs the water from the surface with the pigment. That leaves beautiful lighter areas that are perfect to simulate snow, stars or dust luck. In combination with salt spreading, they mimic this effect surprisingly well. I added a few brushes which make things not typical for the watercolor technique. It would be rather hard to paint light geometrical particles even with gouache. This is what shiny dust, shiny little dust, triangle spatter and triangle spatter add do. I saw similar light dust on many Japanese artworks stylized on watercolors on a Japanese art gallery called Pixiv, and I wanted to be able to add it to my works. So here they are. I think I told a lot about how important it is to recreate a subtle look in digital watercolor technique. It is not only a matter of lost and found game or delicate color transition. Leaving blank light areas on the canvas also help. It is said that we allow our illustration to breathe. So if you are a beginner, it is a good idea to not cover your canvas from a border to border with color. Leave a bit of light space. I also will start the process of painting from light colors to dark, like it is common in a traditional. Start from mixing light colors with brushes like smooth color or smooch colors and slowly use for example watercolor basic subtle watercolor to add darker colors and paint details. And remember to not overwork your illustration. When you know all the brushes and their purpose of usage, don't stop there, experiment, discover. Yes, there are all the rules and instructions and such, but it is always good to check what if. Be aware that there are no tools that can replace the skills and experience. It doesn't matter if you paint with oils, watercolor or digitally. Without knowing the fundamentals of drawing and painting, it always will be difficult to achieve the intended effect. But choosing the right tools and the knowledge of how to use them can make the process less painful. And this was the purpose of creating this video. You can find my watercolor brush set on my Etsy shop, link in description. There is more than 70 brushes, uh, whole paper texture, whole watercolor textures, examples of strokes and usage of brushes for illustration and a short PDF tutorial. And that's all for today. <laughs> Have fun with painting whatever tools you choose.